Hello, hello. Welcome to another week of the Bookseller, your podcast book review show. I'm your host, as always, the one and only, let me get some round of applause, it's me, Jessica Gillen. I'll clap for myself. There we go. (laughs) Anyway, we have a great book to talk about this week. We're going to jump right into that. This is The Bookseller, and all of this is brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. Here we go, jumping into another book review. Last week, I reviewed Circe by Madeline Miller, and that book was phenomenal. If you have not checked it out, make sure to listen to my last episode, and if you're a lover of Greek mythology and fantasy, that's the book for you. Men and women, girls and boys, check it out. All right, so this week (laughs) actually surprised me, and I talked about the possibility of reviewing this in the future. But if you do not recall, back in January, I reviewed Caraval by Stephanie Garber. And if you haven't listened to that episode, that is one of the most talked about episodes on my podcast just because a lot of people liked it. I kind of bashed it a bit, picked it apart. You seem to like that when that happens. And there were some issues with the writing that I had, which led me to be extremely frustrated. So at that moment, it was about almost a year old when I reviewed that book, but I reviewed it because the new book, Legendary, was coming out in May, and I was always intrigued by the concept. It's a circus. Um, There's a man that goes by legend that every now and then he he has this seven-day, five-day circus that people play. Um, to win a prize at the end. And usually it's a wish or something fantastical. So people are always playing this game and it's hard to not let it become real. So the premise is really interesting and that was originally why I read Caraval. I did not like it. I gave it about a two and a half to a three star rating, meaning I was kind of middle of the road. I liked some of it, but I definitely felt really heated and irritated by the writing. Now, mind you, that was a debut novel. That was the first book she had published. Um, I'm not sure about the first book she wrote, but it's one of the main ones. When they say debut, that's her first mainstream published book. And by her writing style, it definitely felt that way. Sometimes debut novels can really be outstanding, show-stopping, people-have-to-read-it kind of book. Um, but then other times it can go the other way around where, wow, you need a lot of help with your writing. You need to really tone this down or do this differently if you're going to write a second book. So with that said, I decided to give book two a chance. That's right. This week I'm reviewing Legendary by Stephanie Garber. So as I mentioned, this is book two in the Carvel Now series. When I recorded my first episode of Caraval, I mentioned that this was going to possibly be a duology because that's what the book contract was. It was a duology. But I said if Legendary does so well, I could really see this becoming a trilogy. And wouldn't you know it, it will be. (laughs) It's going to be a trilogy. Um, Definitely the way that the book ended, Legendary, It is absolutely 100% set up to be a book three. Now, when I was reading the second book, I was under the impression that it was still going to be a duology. So I was kind of looking forward to getting a lot of answers um, that were left up in the air from book one. And that kind of was the main reason why I wanted to read it was just to kind of get closure in a sense. (laughs) 
sometimes I'm kind of weird like that, even if I don't like a book, but I still feel invested in to see the the complete arc of the story, I will end up reading a book I don't like. <laughs> and I'm kind of strange like that. And let me know if you've ever done that too. Just a book really irritated you and you didn't like it. But at the same time, there was always a piece of it that you're still like, hmm, I wonder what happens though. <laughs> so that was me. And yeah, I gave this book a shot. It is her second book in the series. And... Yeah, we'll uh we'll get into what I think here. Let's let's first break down um all the information you need to know about this book. So keep in mind this is book two. I may or may not trying not to spoil anything if you have not read the first book, but it's gonna be generally the same pre- pre- bleh, premise of the first book. Gosh, I'm talking over my words and just La la la. We're fine though. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and keep this spoiler free, but just don't, don't shame me. Don't book shame me, guys. Okay, so Legendary by Stephanie Garber is book two in the Caravel series. It is a young adult fantasy book, definitely aimed in that genre for a couple of reasons. It is um, published in May 29th, 2018. So this is only a month and a half old, very new, uh, very much kind of a buzz novel right now. The hardcover was a little bit bigger than the first book, Caraval. Legendary is 451 pages, where I believe Caraval was in the early 400 pages, like 407 or something. Um, So this is about 50 pages bigger. It also includes an epilogue, and as far as I'm seeing a lot of YA books lately be that dense, and to be honest, it didn't read like an overly dense book. It wasn't hard to dredge through, and the pace definitely was easy to kind of go through. I had the opportunity to read this um, hardcover as well as listen to a portion of it while in my car on Saturday. So I had a very long work day on Saturday, and I wanted to be able to finish this book by Saturday night. So I decided I'm going to use my Audible credit to buy a Legendary. Uh, gosh, you know, probably not my best move just in the fact that those are very expensive and it was a credit, but whatever, the things I do for reading. So that was kind of a nice promise. I got to see both how the the book came off to me while reading, as well as what the audiobook was like. And I listened to about four, four and a half hours of the audiobook on Saturday. So the ratings, this actually right now has a higher rating in Goodreads than the first book. Again, though, when I checked the ratings for Caraval, and it was a Goodreads rating of a four, that was also a, over a, almost a year almost said over a year. It was a little bit less than a year since the book came out. So it had a lot more ratings, a lot more people had read it. So that's why it had a four, in my opinion, just a lot more people rating it. And right now, because this is such a new new book, Legendary, it has a 4.3 rating, but I really do think it's going to shake out to be the same as Caraval. Amazon, I mean... I don't know why I bother to even look at the ratings there because I feel like there's never been a under four star rated book on Amazon, but I don't know. I'm not really sure. I feel like more people are um, actually honest about book reviews on Goodreads than they are on Amazon. Anyway, with that said, Amazon has a rating of 4.5. <laughs> Big surprise there. So, yeah, the ratings don't really surprise me. Like I said, it is a new book. So most people that are reading this right now are people that probably really liked the first book. I mean, aside from me, really liked the first book and were excited to pick up the second book. So these are all people that were probably awaiting with anticipation to read the next book in the series. And most people... um, will follow a series like that. So that's why I think it has a rating like that right now. I would be really interested to see in a couple months what the shakedown is even more. 
All right, let's do the description and then we'll take a short break and we'll talk about my personal feelings on this book, what you've been waiting for. All right, here we go. A heart to protect, a debt to repay, a game to win. After being swept up in the magical world of Caraval, Dontella Dragna has finally escaped her father and saved her sister Scarlet from a disastrous arranged marriage. The girl should be celebrating, but Tella isn't yet free. She made a desperate bargain with a mysterious criminal, and what Tella owes him, no one has ever been able to deliver. Caraval Master Legend's true name. The only chance of uncovering Legend's identity is to win Caraval, so Tella throws herself into the legendary competition once more, and into the path of the murderous heir to the throne a doomed love story, and a web of secrets, including her sisters. Caraval has always demanded bravery, cunning, and sacrifice. But now the game is asking for more. If Tella can't fulfill her bargain and deliver Legend's name, she'll lose everything she cares about, maybe even her life. But if she wins, Legend and Caraval will be destroyed forever. Welcome, welcome to Caraval, the game's have only just begun. So yeah, there's actually a little bit in there. I'm surprised that it doesn't spoil more. But yes, that description is beautiful. Well done. I like that. So let's take a quick break. One minute, you're going to listen to our wonderful offerings here at Eventide. And we'll be back shortly to hear what I really think. You know, there's nothing quite as satisfying as a good conversation with intelligent company. Join comedian Don Smith every week as he sits down and talks with comedians, actors, filmmakers, writers, and everyday schmoes. It's The Life with Don Smith, Wednesdays at noon on 106.9 FM, and now available on the Eventide Entertainment Podcast feed every Friday on Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes. Wednesdays on Eventide, Robert Yetter and Mike Shea sit down and throw albums at each other, talking about them, picking them apart, ripping them a new one. All different artists, all different genres, all different levels of suckage. It's Track Record, Wednesdays at 9 a.m. on the Eventide Podcast B. For more information, go to eventideent.com. All right, we're back, and let's jump right into it and get to the nitty-gritty here. So the description is very intriguing, and Legendary Book 2, I will say right now, was better than the first book. It answered a lot of questions. The There was a lot of mystery, a lot of different plots, kind of like the first book. The first book definitely had a lot of plots going on, but this felt a little bit darker a little bit higher stakes, and just the difference in having a different perspective was awesome. So this book was written from Dontella's perspective, which in book one, it was from Scarlet's perspective. So they're sisters and they grew up together. And as you guys remember, if you, have, if you haven't listened to the show, I hated Scarlet. I hated reading her. I hated her, um, her character, her, who she was, how she whined, how she thought, like just everything about her I hated. And I found that a lot of people that enjoyed Caraval actually really liked Scarlet and could see themselves in her, which is fine. Cool. Do you, homie. But <laughs> people that did not like Caraval hated Scarlet, and also really got annoyed by the metaphors. Last book in Caraval, the metaphors and the prose was just overwhelming with the amount of ridiculousness. I mean, if you, again, if you haven't listened to that episode, I put in quotes in there from descriptions from the book that were so absolutely ridiculous It just at times when I was reading that book would make me be like, are you serious? Stop writing like this. One, it takes you completely out of the story because you have to reread it to be like, what 
did you just say? That is the most ridiculous way to describe a spider web if I've ever heard one. So in this book, there was still a little bit of that. But I think because this is book two, maybe a lot of the feedback she got was like, hey, yeah, Stephanie, you might want to calm it down there with the way you describe things because people seem to be really irritated by the way that you wrote. She has a lot of original ideas, a lot of cool concepts, and I do believe that she does have the makings to be a very good fantasy writer. I think this being her first series, there's definitely um, some room for growth here. She's definitely, I think, in her next series that she does, is going to be a lot better. Um, Just to see the improvement from Caraval to Legendary was very apparent, and to a lot of people that did not like Caraval, found themselves liking Legendary. Like, I liked the book. Did I love it and I I couldn't put it down? No, but I did like it and I wasn't as irritated with it as I was with Caraval. All right, so as we talked about, this is from Dontella's perspective, which I really liked her in the first book. We didn't get too much, but she seemed more of a complicated character. And I really liked reading from her perspective this book. And something I immediately noticed was how much Stephanie's characterization and the way that she described characters and kind of built them was so much stronger in this book. Legendary is very much character driven where Caraval was very plot-driven. Legendary, not saying it lacks plot, it has a lot of plot, but I think people get hung up on the part that it's very description-heavy and therefore very character-driven. A lot of the movement for the plot happens through the character development, which we didn't get any of in the first book. It was kind of very wishy-washy in the first book. The second book, you're learning about um, Scarlet, the the prince that we kind of get to know. He, he's known as the Prince of Hearts. Um, Legend, we find out way more about him. We find more about Dante, Julian, um, and uh, Dantella, of course. Very, very strong um, characters written in this book this time, and I can definitely see she improved on her character building a hundred percent. Her world building was also a lot stronger. I felt like in the first book, it was very much kind of beautiful descriptions thrown at your face to kind of make you be like, oh, that sounds so pretty, like, mmm. Where in this book, it actually was not left to your imagination, but described in a sense that it left room for the reader to get to explore within their own imagination, which is why I love fantasy. I need world building, but just enough where my mind can take over the pieces that you didn't put in. And I definitely could see myself walking the streets um, in this Caraval rather than the last Caraval. Also, Dontella was just a way better person to read about. I, as I've said, I did not like Scarlet at all. And I was actually very happy that we didn't get too much of her this book. Thank God I needed a break. <laughs> so that was, thank you, Stephanie. Um, I do have an inkling, though, just based on the growth of the characters. Even though we didn't get a lot of Scarlet, we still got some growth from her. We're going to see how her plot kind of unfolds. And I can tell you right now with book three, which for sure is going to happen, I have a feeling of how her plot, Scarlet's plot, is going to be driven out. And I think it's a really cool concept, the fact that book one had Scarlet's perspective as much as I didn't like it. It was cool that that happened. Scarlet had book one, Dontella had book two, and I really do believe in book three, Both perspectives are going to come and they're going to alternate. It's going to be a dual perspective book. That's just kind of my guess right now, just so that way we can both get progress and closure for each character, each sister. So yeah, 
a lot of descriptions. People didn't like it in the sense that it was too character driven. It was too description heavy. To me, that was a strength because it was really lacking in the first book. She had cool concepts, but she couldn't tie anything together. Everything just kind of happened magically, I guess. So the plot actually made a lot of sense. The love interests made sense this time instead of Scarlett and Julian. That whole love story we've heard time and time again that just doesn't make sense in book one was ridiculous. I'm not a fan of their relationship. I wasn't really a fan of it in this book. I just don't like them together. Now, Dontella, her love interest is so conflicting because she has two people that she kind of has to go back and forth one. She has a complicated relationship with Dante and because he's very much like um, appears to be a womanizer and, you know, just is on to the next girl. Once he's had one girl, he's on to the next girl kind of mentality. But there's some complicated feelings there between the two of them, which was really cool to get. Like, almost the entire book is them being kind of silly, but not wanting to step on each other's toes kind of feeling. And it was definitely a really awesome build up. Now, the other love interest for Dontella was the Prince of Hearts, who, thanks to Dante, at the very beginning of the book, kind of uh, makes a lie saying that Dontella is engaged to this this prince who is known to be very cruel. There's a lot of rumors about him murdering his, um, all the different heirs that were in front of him, as well as his ex fiance. Um, there's just a lot of scary rumors surrounding this guy. And Dante thought it would be hilarious to lie and say that she, Dontella, was engaged to this person. Oh man, did that backfire in his face. So we actually also have the prince, who is a very complicated character, who also actually ends up being a very big plot line. Not not just in the sense that he's like this mean, scary prince that she's now like has to pretend to be engaged to, but he's actually one of the big plot points in the sense of the way that this book um, unfolded. So in this book, it's about the fates. Now, the fates are these magical, have a lot of magic. If you think of tarot cards, they're the images depicted in those tarot cards are actual real beings and they have a lot of power, but they're also very dangerous. So these fates are, have been trapped in this deck of cards for years, long, long time. And the Prince of Hearts happens to be one of those fates who actually ended up getting out of one of the cards. We don't really know the whole story behind him. You have to read the book to kind of figure that out. And he gets out out of one of the cards and his whole mission is to try to break free all of the fates. And the whole point of Caraval this year is to keep that from happening. Legend wants to destroy the fates to keep that from happening because the world would turn into chaos and there would be so much power and magic that it could end up destroying everybody. So that's the whole premise there. And we get the prince who is this complicated love interest that we find out is a fate. And it's really, really cool. He was one of the best parts of the book just because he's very dark, menacing, very complicated, and has a very interesting, rich history. I think another reason why I really like the idea of the fates is because I'm a huge fan of the Arcania Chronicles by Cressley Cole, I think, Cressley Cole. She has written a series that's still happening. Um, I think her last book is coming out next year. Really great series and is very much the same, like tarot cards, being real beings and the way that they're depicted in the cards means certain things. And so it very much reminded me of that series, which I love. So I think that's why I liked it so much. As well as we find out that the fates, the people that um, were the fates and were given their magical abilities, Legend was also given his magic abilities by the same person who gave 
the fates, magic abilities, but also trap them in the cards. So that's really cool. So we finally in this book, which was a big issue of me in my la- in the last book, Caraval, was we didn't get any explanation about the magic, how it happened, how he had all this power, how it came to be, anything like that. Where now in book two, with the plot line of the fates coming in, we find way more about how the magic works. Where did it come from? How did he get this power? And what are the stakes? It is so much better that it's explained. I know for some people, they're kind of like, what the hell? Why did the fates come out of nowhere? Honestly, thank God, because I did not need another book where it was basically just assumed that there's magic. No explanation about why or how. There's just, there just is. So I'm thankful for that. And I really, really liked that plot line. So yeah, the rest of the plot is really interesting setting. It's set into the kind of the capital of this world that we're in. Um, The book definitely had higher stakes. Dantella's life is in the balance. We find the mystery surrounding Tella and Scarlet's mother who went missing or ran away or something happened to her in book one where she just disappeared and left her kids with her abusive husband slash their father that was the villain in the last book. So we kind of find more about the mystery, what happened to their mother, and that is also a stake for why Dontella decides to play the game. She kind of wants to find out what happened to her mom, but that also puts her own life at risk. We get the Prince of Hearts, who is kind of in this book deemed the villain. Very, very complicated, though, so that's awesome. Um, We find out at the end here, we find out who Legend is. We get some answers. Who is Legend? How did he come to be? I mean, it kind of was back and forth in the book. Like, it made you like, who is Legend? Where does he? What does he do? Uh, uh. It was a constant plot thing to think about. And I'm kind of glad we got some finality there. But also, I enjoyed the way it ended because it wasn't like, it made sense. And it it was hard to grasp in the sense that it it kind of broke your heart a little, but at the same time, I loved the way that it ended. The next book is definitely going to answer every question we have left. I'm sure it's going to be hard for her to write, just because I know that this book was kind of difficult for her to write. So I'm curious if it will be maybe like next November, October area. So maybe October, November of 2019. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it though. So lastly, the writing, like I said, I thought it really, really improved. I was very, very impressed with the lack of ridiculous metaphors now. Mind you, they're still there. There was still a couple And I will just give you two examples of a good metaphor and a description. And one that just kind of made me, what? There was way more, especially when I was listening to the audiobook when I was driving. I remember one in particular, but I I couldn't find it in the book that just made me kind of be like almost embarrassed that I heard that. You know, like when your mom or a friend says something so ridiculous that you're like, you can't, you don't actually think that, do you? And so just to hear this metaphor come through my speakers while I'm driving by myself and just be like, oh, that's so embarrassing. How did she not, like when she wrote that down, not be like, mm, that sounds silly. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, so this is a good metaphor. Everything about it breathed enchantment. Even its swollen sails appeared charmed. They blazed red in the day and silver at night, like a magician's cloak hinting at mysteries concealed beneath, which Tella planned to uh, uncover that night. So that's kind of nice. Like, it, it flows really well. Here's a bad one. The air tasted like wonder like candied butterfly wings caught in sugared spider webs and drunken peaches coated in luck. So, although that sounds pretty, I just why? Why couldn't you say the air tasted 
like sugar or something. Like, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. I am very, like, why is a drunken peach coated in luck? What does that mean? I, I don't, and when stuff like that comes up, and it does come up, not as often as the first book, thank God, but when it does come up, it takes you out of the story for a second, and you, you just have to kind of dub, do a double take. Like, what? What does that even mean? What are you trying to say to me right now? I don't understand. So, yes, they're ridiculous still. I don't have a whole list to pick apart. There is quite a few in the book, though, that will make you just kind of close your eyes, deeply sigh, and kind of put your hand in your head. Just, why, Stephanie? Why? (laughs) So, her writing did improve. I will give her that. Book two, way better than the first one. I am very pleased that I read it. It answered a lot of questions. It definitely came up with more questions. And I kind of have a feeling of how book three is going to go. But I still think I'm going to read it. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to read book three to kind of get some finality. I need closure. I need a proper breakup. I can't just let it hang in the balance for me. At this point, after I read book two, I have to read book three. So, Honestly, I would give this a four out of five. It was way better. I loved the descriptions. I loved the explanation of magic. The writing was vastly improved. Great character development. Thank God, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, for those of you that read book one and just hated it so much that you just can't stand it, don't read book two. There's no point. But it was there were some of you out there that didn't really like it but liked it or even loved it. Give book two a shot because you do get more growth. And I think the plot in book two was super cool. So with that said, I really liked it. And yeah, that's how I feel. It wasn't that bad. I'm pleasantly surprised considering how much I did not like Carvel. So, I don't know if it's just Scarlet I hate or if it was just not a very well-written book for me to enjoy. Mind you, it was a debut, so we have to give her a little bit of leeway there. But, uh, yeah. Book two is so much better. I'm, I'm pleased that I read it and it was a good weekend. Um, it was a good book to read over the weekend. And am I still enthused to read some more? Absolutely The next book I'm reading is going to be Furyborn, which is also a very recent release, so make sure to look for that next week. So with that said, happy reading, and I hope you find a new world to get lost into. Oprah's Book of the Month Club, please, we've got something much better in store for you. Let's talk about books. The energy is right. I got a candle going. It feels good. Every Monday morning, Jessica Gillen sits down and talks with you about the very best in books and literature. Murder on the Orient Express. The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. The Cruel Prince. It's the bookseller. Every Monday morning brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. <laughs>